let's be absolutely honest about it. It's been a hugely challenging 12 months since my last State of the City address. We were hit hard in Wolverhampton by the COVID-19 pandemic, and we all know the virus has claimed over 123,000 lives in the UK. And actually here in our own city, many hundreds of families have lost loved ones. And on behalf of this council, I'm sure, I, I'm sure everyone will join me in extending to them our deepest condolences. Crisis has, however, in many ways brought us closer together. Families and communities have supported each other as never before. And I'm, pr I'm proud, I'm sure you are indeed as, as well, Madam Mayor. I'm proud of that, of, of what we've done. We certainly know how to look after our own in this city and we show light where there is darkness. I'm also incredibly pr proud of the huge role our, our council has played in steering our city through the crisis. I mean, can, can people remember a year back, it was our council in the immediate aftermath of the first lockdown that set up the Wolverhampton Food Hub at Aldersley and delivered 1.3 million vital meals to thousands of vulnerable families. It was our council that delivered 900,000 meals for city food banks to distribute, certainly a lifeline for those in need. And it was our council and our fantastic city partners that helped 397 people homeless or at risk of being homeless get a roof and a room. And a particular thanks to, to the hotel. And then, in fact, the hotel manager says she hasn't had a more well-behaved and lovely set of residents and not one of them caught COVID. It was our council that also sourced and delivered 4 million items of PPE to local care providers and remember those calls out there it was a very difficult time but we, we managed and it was our council that paid out 60 million pound in business grants and delivered 31 million pound in rates relief to hard pressed city businesses it was our council one of the very first in the country to set up rapid testing that has delivered to date 60 000 rapid COVID tests to help keep our city safe and it was our council that reached out to NHS partners to provide much needed logistical and resource support to our city's vaccination efforts. I mean, at, at this point, Madam Mayor, I would really like to pay tribute to our incredible NHS colleagues, either on the front line at New Cross or indeed working on the vaccine rollout, along with our very own fantastic council key workers. But let's not forget, that as well as responding to the, power of, to the pandemic, our council also kept call services like bin collections going, many other things. And, and not all places in the country did this. And so I really must thank everyone involved. And yes, it would be cheerless of me not to acknowledge the support we've had from government, which has helped. And uh, the money that's been sent to us, we've, we've efficiently uh, got it out. Uh, we're, we're not keeping any, any behind. We'll make sure every penny goes where it should be directed. You know, we, we appreciate that, the help. Um, but perhaps we just perhaps need to once again look, look up about the levelling up agenda and how that needs a fundamental review of fair funding for all local authorities in the country. Yes, despite the challenges of COVID, we have plans for a brighter future. Our recovery roadmap um, developed, co-developed with two and a half thousand local people is realising our city. Through it, we will continue to be bold and ambitious and forward thinking. And I'm sure as Councillor Louise Miles will highlight later, despite financial challenges, we continue to manage our money well, to balance the budget, again and continue to deliver good services and on top of this we will continue to invest in the future of our city and the things that matter most to local people in jobs in vibrant high streets and communities in opportunities for our young people in our businesses and in our most vulnerable residents and families and let's put this message out there no one gets left behind in our city.
Now, we all know we're making great strides with vaccines, but the virus hasn't gone away. It will have a lasting impact on things many of us take for granted, like food, shelter, um, even social connectivity. And so we must act. We will make sure no child in our city is left hungry or left out. I'm going to provide nearly two million pound in funding for healthy meals and engaging activities during school holidays. We will also provide half a million meals to hundreds too many of hard pressed city families with nearly half a million pound funding for emergency food parcel deliveries to our city's vital food banks. And yes, I must uh, I must continue to thank them and, and remind them we will continue to support you. Also on the uh, issue of uh, rough, sleep, rough sleepers, we're going to continue to help people rebuild their lives. Um, in fact, at the very last census, I think we had three people, rough sleepers, um, still out in, in the city. That has a reduction from 33 just a couple of years ago. Um, so we're sending out a clear message that no one needs to sleep out on our city streets with upwards of two million pound investment in a new multi-agency team based in a new building which will offer a wraparound service that will offer accommodation, assessment, ongoing support. And we all support residents and families at risk of losing their homes by making an additional £1.2 million available and continuing to provide emergency temporary accommodation. I spoke about the digital to divide. We are, we're, we're ready uh, uh, and we're ready and we're going to tackle it. So we're going to send a bold ambition to close the city's digital divide by giving everyone who needs it, the kit, the connectivity and the skills to access opportunity. And we'll pump prime this for at least half a million pounds of our investment. But I want to just highlight uh, a, a group of people who, who, who are perhaps suffering more than any, and that's our young people. I don't think I've ever seen a time in, 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 in my lifetime where they've suffered as much as what they're going through now. We can't have a lost generation in our city, which is why we will invest millions in giving them the opportunities they need to develop and thrive. This, of course, means listening to them, listening to them first, giving them a say, and for us putting our money where our mouth is. With funding to commission the activities they want to get involved in, not what we say they should. Supported by a near £1 million pound fund, but a ring fence pot for our most disadvantaged youngsters. We're also going to connect them to a new network of youth engagement workers who, as COVID hopefully recedes, will be out and about in our local communities, funded by another £1 million council investment. And I'm sure there's plenty more, uh, that perhaps John Reynolds, Councillor John Reynolds would like to say more on this because it just shows what an important priority it is for us. On the issues of, of vital local businesses, uh, we, people may have heard about the Wolverhampton Pounds initiative, and we're going to drive that forward, signing a joint statement of intent to keep more of the over £830 million combined spending power of our six key city anchor organisations. And we're going to hit the ground running. As a start, we will re-procure multi-million pound council maintenance contracts to grow local businesses, jobs and apprenticeships, potentially putting over three million pound back straight away into the local economy. We're going to support 200 small local businesses to stabilise and grow through a 150,000 pound investment in our business relay programme, with certainly an ambition to grow this further. And we will also develop a new business enterprise hub by providing a physical space right in the heart of the city centre to give businesses access to a full range of partner support services. Let me just talk about jobs and, and learning opportunities. We're going to continue to deliver our fantastic Wolves at Work programme, which has helped now over 6,000 local people into jobs and supported 607 local businesses 
to recruit and upscale with an extra £450,000 funding. Crucially, we're going to be working with a thousand disconnected young people uh, between the ages of 16 and 29 to create those positive pathways to work. And we're going to create conditions in our city for new city centre jobs, including 300 at the I-9, by building on our £30 million investment in top quality city centre office space, whether that's at I-11, I-9, I-10, as part of our wider commercial district strategy. And as the uh, Madam Mayor said, this will be boosted further by the relocation of the Ministry Housing and local governments, communities and local governments. On the I-54, we will continue to deliver the I-54 Western Extension and this will create 1,700 new jobs for local residents on the back of £300 million investments already. We will develop new employment lands at the Bilson Urban Village to create up to 300 new jobs on the back of a £20 million investment. Yes, and we will continue to urge government to deliver our vision for a new city learning quarter, which we know will create 1,500 new jobs and indeed safeguard 750 more. And we'll be looking at government to match our vision as part of their commitment to levelling up. On the issues of high streets and, and communities, um, we will deliver our £38 million investment to a new fantastic civic halls, managed, as people now know, by a world-class commercial operator and opening very early next year. It will bring millions of pounds, thousands of visitors and hundreds of jobs, and at no cost to the local taxpayer. We will deliver West Side, but people know, due to the pandemic, we're going to have to rephrase, rephrase the work. This year, uh, as part of that, uh, that uh, relook, we will prioritise and announce a major brand hotel development, the culmination of years of work. This will complement the reopening of the civic halls and a relocation of government out of London. And of course, our very positive negotiations with leisure, leisure operators uh, continue. We're going to invest £1.2 million in our fantastic art gallery to improve the experience for visitors with a brand new cafe and better accessibility. And isn't it just perfect, just in time for the British Art Show in 2022, which we know will bring close to 100,000 people into our city. We're also going to be running a, and funding a bold new five-year event city plan aimed at delivering 2 million visitors and near £70 million in local economic benefits, and certainly by capitalising on the opportunities of the 2022 Commonwealth Games. We will improve our connectivity and infrastructure with a £14 million investment in new major schemes, such as the City's Gateway, investment in upgrading existing infrastructure, and investment in digital and new tech, and on housing. We will continue our plans to build thousands of new homes, building on Brownfield first. We will continue to innovate and will soon announce a new home ownership pathway scheme for local residents with regional and commercial partners. One of the most important topics we all know is the climate emergency. And we're going to deliver on our council's commitments, ambitious commitments, to be net carbon zero by 2028. There's a huge amount of work already going on, and I'm absolutely sure uh, uh, Councillor Steve Evans will be more than happy to speak a bit about this later. But just a small, a, a couple of um, points if I may make. We're going to be investing in making key council buildings more energy efficient, including near two million in low energy carbon reduction boilers, and we'll get rid of the most inefficient buildings. We will switch all 27,000 streetlights across our city to energy efficient uh, light emitting diodes, LED lighting with smart sensors, and we'll do this by the end of 2022. 
saving around, now listen to this, saving around 4,000 tonnes of carbon a year. And we'll back this with a £7 million investment. And our council will also lead the way in the city working with our partners. A fantastic example is the Bowman's Harbour. We're building one of the UK's first city centre solar farms on toxic land with a multi-million pound investment. It will deliver clean, green energy for life-saving work at New Cross Hospital. And finally, Madam Mayor, uh, in conclusion, listen, we know, we know how to look after our own in this city. And I believe this council is doing an incredible job in making sure no one gets left behind. We all know COVID hasn't gone away. We need to stay alert, we need to be ready and led by our public health evidence and advice. And what a fantastic team they are too. But we will also deliver on our bold vision and ambitious plans for our city by investing in what matters. Delivering our, our, our ambitions as the Ministry of Housing moving out of London to our city demonstrates. We'll take partnership with and support from government and we'll continue to work with them. And let's be clear, this council is investing new money and it's our own money. By doing so, we will re-energise re and realise our city on the road to recovery. And this will be done with fairness and inclusivity at the very heart of things, so that everyone benefits from the brighter days that lie ahead. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor.